two movies to talk about today but before we get to that i want to have a little news segment because two of two of our favorite directors well one of them's my favorite direct well not favorite but one of them's one of my favorite directors and the other one's a favorite of yours <laughs> we got two movies coming out drum roll please waves a24 well these are both a24 movies we're having an a24 news segment deal with it <laughs> waves deal with it's coming it. out this year right okay Written and directed by Trey Edward Schultz, who did Cretia and It Comes at Night. Awesome. So I'm going to see that. Hype. Yeah. That the sounds other cool. One, yeah, it's a, it's a musical. The guy that did It Comes at Night, his next film is a musical, and I, I don't know what reality is anymore. Cool. Uh, <laughs> two young couples navigate through the emotional minefield of growing up and falling in love. So it's a coming-of-age romance musical. Um... <laughs> I hope it's a teen drama that you hate. That's going to be great. It's just like <laughs> Trey Edward Schultz, he's he's great. He's get, he's fantastic story writer and he's just got like impeccable like visual taste. And if his next movie is just like this this hor- like this just not my kind of thing at all, I'm going to be so sad. But we'll see. <laughs> the other one's Midsummer. Yeah. Written and directed by Ari Aster who did Hereditary. Dope. It's his next movie. I am very It is excited. it is a horror movie. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is such a this is such oh. an incredible blend of excitement and trepidation cuz I don't know if I can go through that again. I don't know if I can live through another Ari Aster horror movie. When's it supposed to come out? This year, what? August. August? Okay. And Waves is coming what, out. Well, what no time? specific. When in August? <laughs> Specifically, what time of day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can prepare. Uh, August 9th. Oh, shit. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> so that means that's the weekend I'm taking off for my birthday at work. So you have to go see it. So I have to go see it. Yeah. Colin. That's unfortunate. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Looks like that's what we're doing. Mm. Great. It's going to be good. Yes. Good news? It's got Will Poulter in it. Uh, who's Will Poulter? He's in? that kid from The Revenant. He was... Oh, Mr. No Eyebrows. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mr. Weird Face. He, yeah. He was in Voyage of the Dawn Treader. He, he was in Eustace. The Maze Runner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that guy. Okay. I like him. Yeah, he's all right. So uh, he's in it. Do we know anybody uh, anybody else in it so far? William Jackson Harper. I don't know who that Florence is. Florence Pug. I don't know who that is. Jack Rayner. I don't. Uh, I, don't I don't know, man. I'd have to see faces. There's I guess. more than one person with a very very Norwegian sounding name, Scandinavian sounding name. There's a character named Ulf and somebody named Ula, and they're played by Scandinavian sounding people. So it's oh. The entire cast has, like, Scandinavian-sounding names, so... Oh, wow, yeah. I s- suppose it's a Scandinavian-set thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, a young woman re- reluctantly joins her boyfriend on a summer trip where things quickly go owry, so it's gonna be a horror movie set in, like, Sweden or something. Great. <laughs> so... Uh, How's that gonna... Okay. I am not... Her- oh, yeah, some context if you if you're not familiar with hereditary or if you're not Lord. familiar with what we think of hereditary it is the most trauma probably the most traumatizing theater experience i've ever had and yeah. it's still kind of i haven't quite got over it it's the one the one movie i've ever seen that is like truly terrifies me so all right it's good <laughs> Yeah. Why couldn't his next movie have been like a rom com or something? Why couldn't it be a musical? (laughs) Yeah. See. See. At least. At least Trey Edward Schultz is being like, "Hey, I know that last movie was super depressing. Let's do a a romance musical, all right?" But no, Ari Aster's like, "No, I'm not done." (laughs) I still say that that guy. He looks like that one character from Resident Evil Seven. He really does. Who? Which guy? 
Ari Aster looks like uh, the the young guy in the family in Resident Evil Seven. Oh sure. I guess. How old's Ari Aster? Anyway, let's get on the A twenty four question. <laughs> This has been our news segment. We're looking forward to those two movies. At least I am. Yeah, sure. I guess. <laughs> Why can't... Okay. What? Okay. Hereditary was so good, I'm obligated to see the next movie that director made. But that sucks. Because it's gonna... It's gonna... It's gonna... Be, be horrible to sit through. That sucks. Yeah. yeah that's Why the couldn't have Hereditary answer. have just been really bad so I could just ignore this next movie? But I can't now. <laughs> I have to go see it. And, ugh. And it's and they're both A twenty four distributed, so we have to see them no matter what. So. I mean, that's also true. It's literally unavoidable. Yep. So, <sighs> speaking of uh, unavoidable, you want to talk about vanishing of Sydney Hall? Sure. Now, a man walks into a store. He searches for a certain section of books. He takes out a can of lighter fluid. I know why he burned the books. Why? Because he wrote them. It's another William Foster Wallace. Sydney Hall. Foster, David Foster Wallace story. Sure. Bingo bango. You have this, except it's entirely fake. Yeah. Um. You got you got a Sydney Hall. He's a guy. He's a guy, and he writes a book, and mm. he gets famous, and then he, he doesn't write any more books. Yes. This movie <laughs> reminded me of um, the Adderall Diaries. At yeah. times. And it also reminded me of Dark Places, but for different reasons. Um, Adderall Diaries, because it's a pretentious movie about a tortured author. Dark Places, because there's such obvious potential in this movie. And it could have been way more interesting than it was, but it just turned out being... Just what was not, Dark not Places great. about? It, I don't even... I don't even remember did what it was about. Dark we did, we did. It was it was it was it was that one movie where that woman. Uh, I totally don't remember. <laughs> um, uh, dark places. Yeah, we definitely saw it. What was it about? <laughs> there was a woman who had like some trauma traumatic experience in her childhood. Oh my god! Yeah, no, that's uh, that's uh, the Charlie's Theron. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie's Theron. She was uh, her family murdered. Um, right. And then right. she she was like. Yeah. Kind of obnoxious throughout the whole movie about it. You can tell that movie left a huge impact on me. Yeah, same. The only the only thing I remember about Dark Place is that I remember talking about how it has such great potential and it could have been better than it was. Yeah. And I feel exactly the same way about The Vanishing of Sydney Hall. There are so many little good things in this movie. There's scenes here and there. There's this scene um, where he's talking to this woman who he's cheating on his wife with. And... This is, the best parts of this movie feature his mental breakdown he has over the course of the movie. And as he's talking, he's like, his reality is starting to break down. And he sees the typewriter in front of him t typing what to say before he says it. And it's like a really, really well shot scene, really well done. And I was like, this could be very effective and very great in a better movie. There are so many scenes like that through, throughout the whole thing. The twist scene with the guy who's looking for him when they meet in the diner. That was a good scene. There's a lot of good scenes, but it's not a good movie. You know? Yeah. No, <laughs> it, I, I completely agree. Like, it, 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 it's just it's just frustrating watching it. I was just like, every, every step it takes, it like shoots itself in the foot immediately after. And the ending is horrible. So, it's, it's just... Yeah. There was so much. They they were almost there. They almost made a good movie. It could have been great yeah. if they had more scenes like like the good ones and it was structured a little better, but What I what I kept coming back to is cuz like I said, it um Oh my god, I'm already forgetting. What's the one with uh David Foster Wallace? What's that movie called? Uh The End of the Tour. The End of the Tour. I kept wanting it to go into like a really in-depth. I wanted it to be that movie. Yeah, I wanted to watch that, that, that movie. That was good. Again. That was a good movie. Um, I, I just wanted people to talk about their existentialism a mm. lot more in this movie than they ever did, um, because they they bring it up all, quite a bit. They're like, yeah, they're living in this world that just doesn't have room for them. Ugh. And it's yeah, like, well, w w that's as deep as it gets. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it it brings up the idea of existentialism, but never actually like talks through it. It just 
essentially it brings up ex- existentialism and just like relies on you to like do the rest it's just like it's like you know what existentialism is is you know we don't need to portray it in any sort of meaningful way you just we'll just tell you that he's going through an existential crisis and you get it you know you don't have to see it you just understand it and it's yeah. like well that's a lazy way of doing it and it would have been so much more interesting if they had dug into it because like that's well, what I, is I, interesting honestly i feel like it would have made the movie worse because when they do it's just kind of pretentious and it's true when but... they try like the scene the some of the scenes are laughably bad when he when he's like oh man nothing matters burn all my books yeah and and he was it literally the most cliched thing he was in a room and she looks over and like the floor is covered with papers like plastered with papers of things things he's wrote and it's like yeah and he's just going it's like no they're all first pages no middle no end and it's just like what (laughs) yeah but if they would have done something along the lines of uh like um a ghost story or something and really like gone off the deep end because they were already kind of heading that way but then they pulled back like super hard Mm -hmm. um i think if they would have really dug into that i think it could have been really cool sure but here we are (laughs) yeah but it's it's um it's ultimately less about that and more about the story i know and well the issue being that the story is pretty weak so i think the focus was in the wrong place for sure and um they did this Tarantino non-sequential thing, and it didn't really do the movie any any favors. I now, don't think I, it detracted too much though either. Well, I just... I don't know. I think I think non-linear storytelling is great if you can make it work, and I don't necessarily think they didn't make it work. But I almost felt it almost felt not necessary. It almost felt like the movie would have been a little more focused if they didn't choose to do it that way. That's how I felt about Dunkirk. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Except I think that actually hurt Dunkirk for me because I was confused sometimes with the story as far as the, the yeah, timeline and, goes. And I wasn't ever really confused with this story because they laid out the timeline and, and it made sense. It, like I'm saying, they didn't do the non-sequential storyline like poorly. It's just... I just kept thinking like there was no real reason for it. Yeah, that's fair. Other than just like jumping between them just so that you're mildly interested again Mm -hmm. because you're seeing something new because otherwise you're sitting through a two hour long movie that is actually really boring Mm -hmm. with very small bits and pieces that you actually enjoy yeah like that's the only reason i can imagine why they would do that can i can i talk to you about the ending real quick sure uh we're gonna go full spoilers for this um I, the biggest letdown of the movie was the reveal about the, about the sports guy at the end. Yeah. Because the way, the way I see it, the entire movie was building up to that. That, that was like the pivotal moment in the story, right? Yeah. And, and, and I thought the truth's going to come out. We're going to learn why he blames himself for that guy's death and why he feels so guilty about it. And it's, it came out and it's like, it wasn't his fault he blames himself for it but it wasn't his fault he he did all he could to i mean he it, it was it was dumb it was so not impactful it's just like th- really that's what happened it's like his his mom found the tape thought he was some sort of pedophile and threw it in the threw it in the fire you know before he got the chance to do anything with it 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 it, it wasn't his fault it was i i I don't know it was just so such a lame reveal you know yeah i thought that the the there was that secondary reveal right afterwards where uh the reveal that his mother is the one who's causing his his uh what what was it seizures yeah yeah Uh, because she pushed him and he hit his head Mm -hmm. i thought that was more impactful but still even that was kind of lame after that yeah. long of a movie you know it's like oh wow yeah by Great. that point you don't really care yeah. it's it's too long that's the main issue with this movie it's too long and not very well paced it feels like twice as long as it actually is yeah and um the third reveal of of his of his wife dying of, of asthma in the in the elevator that scene was fairly well done it was like really tragic and it was another one of those scenes where it's just like they knew what they were doing for this scene but they couldn't but the thing is, it comes right after the, the, the school football guy reveal. 
and I was still reeling over how unsatisfactory and stupid it was that I, I couldn't really bring myself to care about his wife dying. And then he, like, at the end, he, like, he dies of sadness or something along those lines? What does uh, he die It of? was, I believe, hemorrhaging of the brain sure. because of so many seizures. But it was set up, over like, so long. but it was set up, like, he was, he was fine, he was in the bed, he was lucid. Yeah, and then and then he was talking. He finally explains his story, and he explains what happened with the kid, and he's just like, "I'm at peace now," and he just dies. And yeah. it's like, <laughs> "Yep, it was dumb." Okay, it was not a good ending. <laughs> I, I initially I didn't even I I thought he just died because he just wanted to die. I thought it was just like a power of the mind kind of thing. <laughs> it's kind it was kind of set up like that because it kind of died on cue, <laughs> which was which was kind of amazing. <laughs> And I was like, whoa. <sighs> That's good. Uh, yeah. He was like, all right, he might he might as well have just said, okay, I'm going to die now. And then just, uh, <laughs> and just slumped over. Because <laughs> I was like, what? I got to say, though, my favorite parts of this movie... Like, my first favorite part was when he walked into a, into a library and just set his own books on fire. And it's like, sure. oh, that was really kind of neat. I hope that goes somewhere interesting. It doesn't. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many things like like the scenes involving him as a homeless person were kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And I actually wish the movie spent more time with it. Yeah, it was way more interesting. Yeah, and the scene I wanted more scenes with him and the other author because those two are great. Yeah, they were interesting <laughs> like, together. They're and just they such just, an interesting pair, and it's like just didn't happen. But it, it it only emerges in the last act of the movie, and you only get like a few minutes with the two of them, and then it's just kind of over. Yeah, and it's like it's a bummer. I was so happy because I was like, "This is like interesting character stuff going on between these two, and it's like really cool." Oh man, uh, we're back to another flashback, and then the movie's over. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. So there's vanishing of Sydney Hall. It's just an absurdly disappointing movie. Yeah, I can't like get all that angry about it because it's like there was good stuff in it, but like it just. It could have been so much better, man. Yeah, that's where I'm at. <sighs> yeah, well. You want to talk about 20th century women? Absolutely. When you were born, I told you life was very big and unknown. There were animals and cities and music. You'd fall in love, have passions, have meaning. But now it's 1979, and nothing means anything. And I know you less every day. I really liked 20th Century Women. Um, I think... <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. It's it's a very, very straightforward, good movie. It's 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 one of those... It's just sort of, yeah. I thought it was okay. I thought, it, yeah. Might be an American Honey situation where I just kind of went with the flow and enjoyed myself and didn't really think too too heavily about it. I didn't either, but that didn't stop me from just thinking it's okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, you got this kid. He has a mother that uh, when she had him, she was 40. So now that he's like 16, she's like 52. 56 whatever sure um it takes place in 1979 yep she was born in the great depression yep and so she's living in this house and she's like a landlord and she has uh she's got she's got people who she rents out to and there's this girl and she's like a, a young a young girl oh 20s 30s she's ellie uh uh, uh oh you're talking about abby the uh yeah the Greta Gerwig, the woman who directed Lady Bird. Yeah, she was good in it. She was good in it. And then she's also renting to a handyman potter man Yeah. who likes women but doesn't know what to do with them. I liked that guy. Yeah, I did too. He, he, was, was, kinda... he was a hippie. Yeah, he's yeah. bizarre. He um, likes meditating. He makes his own shampoo. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> like... Okay. <laughs> this is a feel good movie in my opinion cuz it's 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 there's drama involved but it's just a movie about likable characters having adventures with each other and i just i didn't like the kid that much 
No, not, not so much the the main kid, not Elle Fanning. Yeah. It should be pointed out, Elle Fanning's in both of these movies. Yeah, Elle Fanning's in a lot of 824 which movies, Which we, we, we didn't realize, I didn't realize She's when I She's in picked. at least four now. Well, yeah. Uh, Ginger and Rosa. Right, she was in that. I was trying to remember what the other one was. It was really bugging me. Mm-hmm. So and that's then, at least four. Yeah, at least four. She, yeah. She's just in a lot of indie movies. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is she typically plays the same character in all of them. She played an alien in How to Talk to Girls at Parties, and yet she still played the same character she always does. Mm-hmm. And I like Elle Fanning as an actress, and I think she pulls off that role very well. But I've seen her in Neon Demon, and I know she can do other things. <laughs> I know she's capable of, of, of not just playing the same angsty teenage love interest character every time, but that's just all she plays. And I'd love to, I want to see her in more and I want to see her like do other things. So she's a talented actress, but like she's so typecast at this point. It's just sort of, yeah, she's like going the way of Sharsha Ronan. No, Sharsha Ronan's done some interesting things. I don't know who that is. She's the she was in Brooklyn. She was in uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. She oh, is in, that uh, what's her face? Lady Bird. Yeah. Was she in Lady Bird? Was she the kid in Lady Bird? Am I being? Uh, I don't Ir- think so. But am I being I... an Irish racist right now? <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about the the lady who made the the little cakes in yes. in Grand Budapest, yes. right? Oh, that's Sharsha Ronan. Are you kidding me? Is it? Yeah. I haven't seen Lady Bird, so I still don't know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But Lady Bird was directed by Greta Gerwig, who played my favorite character in 20th Century Women, the, yeah. the, the, the feminist woman. You know, I didn't really like the mother all that much in that movie either. I didn't well, hate the, her. The movie is about really the like mother's her. growth as a character. Yeah. She starts off kind of, kind of just lost. And then by the end of the movie, she just got a little more purpose in life. But, but uh, I don't yeah. know if that made her likable to me. It just yeah. I don't but know. Abby was definitely kind of the highlight of the whole movie for me as well. Yeah, Abby. Was you great. know, anytime she was on screen and talking, you know, I I found her to be the most interesting. Mm-hmm. Her entire thing is that she was born. Uh, for her mother was taking meds to have kids, and the med at the time they didn't know causes the kids to have cervical cervical cancer Mm. and so she's going through the process of finding out she has cervical cancer finding out what she can do about it and then also finding out she can't have kids probably Mm -hmm. and she is this like cool punk rock chick Mm -hmm. that is just living in this house doing the best she can and she's just by far the most interesting character she's a photographer and she just i don't know she's she's got some really some really woke ideas yeah. for the time, especially. But it, but it manages to not be overbearing or or cringeworthy. It's more so, she's just she's she's got she's got a good character. Mm-hmm. She's a good good yeah for sure. Um, yeah, no, she's just she's an interesting character out of yeah. all of them. Um, then there's Ella Fanning, and she plays the teen love interest. Surprise, surprise. Yep, she um, plays Elle Fanning. She's good at playing Elle Fanning, but she she just plays Elle Fanning. Oh, but in this one, she's a slut, and she goes and has sex with everybody. Yeah. Except for the main kid. Yeah. Who wants to have sex he's, with her. He's consistently getting cucked. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the, throughout the entire movie, that's just his thing. Yeah. And that's actually his main character arc, trying to, he's just like, you know what, I don't want to be a cuck anymore. <laughs> and she's like, but I like it. And yeah. he's like, no, get out. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> There's, there's some weird stuff going down the latter half of this movie. Yeah, there definitely is. Um, you remember that scene where he, he got knocked the fuck out? Oh, yeah, because they were talking about um, clitoral stimulation. Yeah. And they just got knocked out. Yeah, they just like beat the living daylights out it's of like, him whoa. because he's like, you probably didn't stimulate her, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that it's just was the, so funny. Yeah. The dumb things kids fight about, and it's like, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. I like it. Yeah, it's okay. Not no ten out of ten, but it's a uh, highly recommend it. I liked it. It's okay. <clears throat> it's in the positive, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, 
I don't have a whole lot of, of really great things to say about it. Me neither. And I don't have a ton of negative things to say either. This is just kind of a this is just kind of a, a non discussion oriented episode. It's just sort of I watched these two movies and my life is unchanged. Yeah. I felt bored and I was a little less bored for the next one. And I was fairly bored throughout most of them. The first but... one's not like horrendously bad and the second one's not like like her like a pinnacle of a24 it's just like one of the better ones Mm -hmm. so yeah i'd probably give these individually like a five and a six i went um i went four for vanishing sydney hall and i don't know what i'm gonna give 20th century women if a movie can um has a good message that that is impressed upon me which i believe 20th century message women did I typically go a little higher, so I'd go like an eight, probably, just because I, I liked it so much and yeah. I, I I like the message. And... You know, the, that scene where they're at the dinner table—that was probably my favorite. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, I like it's it. really good though. Yeah, it's really well done. Like that's the one scene that really stuck out in that movie for me. For sure. Um, they're just sitting at a dinner table, and Abby then proceeds to tell them about how she's menstruating. Yeah. And they're like oh uh, and she's like what it's just menstruating you have to get okay you have to be okay with it like, <laughs> I like say that. it say it look me in the eye and say it <laughs> my favorite part about that whole scene and it is one of the 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 funniest moments of the film is the stuff that the hippie dude starts saying <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> it's like it's like everybody's getting in kind of this like okay we're, we're doing this feminism thing and the hippie dude's like you know <laughs> You can't just say, when you have sex with a woman, you can't just have sex with her, her, her vagina. You have to sex have sex with the whole person, and everybody's, yeah. like, looking at it. Like, what the hell? And even Abby's like, okay, let's not. That's, like, a different story for a different time, yeah. but let's get back to what I was saying. And it's just, like... Yeah, it's very good. It's just the most awkward dinner scene. Well, and then it's right like, after uh, the menstruation thing, then Ella Fanning's like, yeah, I had sex when I was 14. It was really mm. bad. It hurt. It's like, yeah, oh, okay. it's just, it just keeps getting progressively weirder. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, it's great. But yeah, that whole scene's good. Yeah. I like it a lot. So yeah, those are our movies. Yeah, I think the clear winner is twentieth century twentieth century whammon. Oh, whammon, whammon. <laughs> that sounds really bad. And that's the clear. That's the clear winner. Uh, what's next? What's next is The Lovers. The Lobster. I don't know anything about The Lovers. <laughs> uh, me neither. You want to know who's in it? Yes. You can't. My phone won't load it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The Lovers. Let's see who will load first. I did the lowers. <laughs> it gave me the losers. <laughs> oh, even better. I love that movie. All you right. do, don't you? I do. It's not good, but it's fun. Uh, Deborah Winger and Tracy Letts. I I don't know who that is, but Me uh, either. they're in this movie, and we're gonna watch it. And it's um, directed and written by somebody named Azazel Jacobs. What else has he done? Azazel. Nothing I've heard of. Cool. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's gooch. Um. Let's see. And then I gotta pick one, don't I? Yeah, you do. Um, let's just go with the next one because I don't know any other movies. And I'm going to save uh, the one that you really want to watch for your pick. All right. Unless you want to see it sooner. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, then we're watching The Exception. Nice. That has Lily James, Jai Courtney, Janet oh. McTeer, and Christopher Plummer. Oh, okay. I know Jai Courtney and Christopher Plummer. Okay. You know who Jai Courtney is? Nope. He's the boomerang. <laughs> from suicide squad <laughs> oh he's the aussie with the boomerang that's what you mean okay i yeah. don't know what his character name is uh, i just call him slipknot no no that's the man who can climb anything <laughs> <laughs> his head blows up <laughs> slipknot he can climb anything that's really? it <laughs> i thought the boomerang i thought that was no, tom that's, hardy it's captain boomer no <laughs> Tom Hardy was originally slated for the role, but they got Jai Courtney, who's a washed-up hack. Okay. 
<laughs> and, and that's the, all I know him for. Oh my god. He's just some drug Australian. That's that's absolutely like, Oh, he looks just like a bad Tom Hardy, though. He's Captain Boomerang, right? That's yeah, his... he is. He's totally. Yeah, he that's does the just name. look like a bad Tom Hardy, though. It's yeah, true. He, he is the he is the budget Tom Hardy. <laughs> More so than the guy from Upgrade. Oh my god, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. The lovers so, of the exception. That's what we're doing. Sounds cool. Hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> See you next week for more fun. I hope. I hope they're good. I hope they're either really good or really bad. I want to have either an amazing or an awful time. I don't like this kind of middle of the road crap. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping for bad. You're hoping for bad? <laughs> yeah. It's fun. I want one the most. Be... The most fun episodes we have are the ones with bad movies. I was just watching um, our episode on Woodshock. It's a blast. Is it? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> it, it, I was so sick of it. It's like, this is really funny. I, I like it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, then I hope they're bad as well. Um, Sounds good. That's all. That's all I got, man. See you next time. See you. On the A24 Quest. Next week. Peace. Episode 24. Oh, we gotta do something special for that. Should we do four movies? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we get. <laughs> that would be so. That would be such an extravaganza. Do you want to do three movies? We could do three. Do you want to do three? Movies? We could do three. Okay, so we're doing three movies. Oh God. Gonna be, um, there's no way I'm gonna watch all you three of them. You have to watch all three of them. Okay. Alright, so we're doing The Lovers, The Exception, and Manage. 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 Oh boy, I'm gonna be editing this tomorrow and I'm gonna be like, why did we choose to do this? <laughs> it's true. It's a very right, bad idea, but we're do doing it. it. Fine, let's do it. I mean, do you have a better idea? No, Kay. let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of A24 Quest, we're doing three movies. Oh yeah, this is the Jewish movie. Yeah, yeah. It looks kind of interesting. Okay. I do know I do know of Menashe a little bit. I don't really know anything about it, except for it's the Jewish movie. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Cool. Next See week. Ya. <sighs> On A24 Quest. Bye. Bye-bye.